The unfolding situation in Ferguson, Missouri, did not emerge out of a vacuum. It's the result of over two decades' worth of the increasing militarization of U.S. law enforcement. And just to tackle some of the myths being put out there by the apologists, this has nothing to do with looting. Okay, the looting happened on Sunday night by a criminal element, some within the town, some who came in from outside, criminal opportunists, who looted some stores in the town of Ferguson, and the police were completely AWOL. You notice that the police, the riot police, the militarised cops with sniper rifles, only showed up in force to oppress peaceful demonstrators and journalists. They were nowhere in sight when the actual looting was going on. And in fact, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, the looting had virtually stopped. This crackdown has nothing to do with looting. And now we see an actual deliberate effort to target journalists and to hide the police brutality that's unfolding. Watch this clip. The police, the riot cops, tear gas Al Jazeera journalists, photographers, cameramen. They're forced to flee, run off in the opposite direction. And then as you can see here in this clip, the riot cops get out of the armoured police car, on which of course we saw the images of snipers positioned. They get out, they dismantle the lighting equipment belonging to the journalists. You can see there, snipers trained at the journalists who are trying to flee the scene. Then they point the camera downwards, so further examples of police brutality cannot be documented. Now we have the police acting as actual physical sensors, firing rubber bullets at journalists, tear gas, harassing, intimidating them, and confiscating, dismantling camera equipment. And as we saw again last night, two journalists from the Huffington Post, the Washington Post, arrested for the crime of not leaving a McDonald's quickly enough. So again, this has nothing to do with looting. When the looting was actually taking place on Sunday night, the cops were AWOL. But when it comes to silencing free speech and targeting journalists, they're out in full force. And again, in an attempt to prevent reporters from documenting the unfolding police brutality, right before the flashbangs, the smoke grenades, the tear gas was rained down on the protesters and the journalists, the Ferguson police told reporters to turn off their cameras. So what are the true origins of this confrontation, these events unfolding in Ferguson, Missouri? Well, of course, St. Louis County law enforcement agencies are part of the Pentagon's 1033 program, as USA Today reports today, Pentagon-fueled Ferguson confrontation. So they're part of this program where local police departments throughout the country, throughout America, so this is not an isolated case in Ferguson, get access, not only access, cheap access to military equipment such as armoured vehicles, MRAPs, Bearcats, etc., as well as pistols, rifles, guns, etc., that were formerly used in places like Afghanistan and Iraq to hunt insurgents. So now we ask, who are the new insurgents, if not the American people? Remember this story we covered back in August last year. Colonel Peter Martino, who was stationed in Fallujah and trained Iraqi soldiers, spoke out at a local New Hampshire council meeting to warn that the Department of Homeland Security and Domestic Law Enforcement were building a domestic army to take on the American people. Remember how the police chief, John Duval, justified a DHS grant to purchase a Bearcat armoured vehicle. He said it was needed to deal with the threat posed by sovereign citizens, free staters and Occupy New Hampshire activists. So they justified the purchase of the armoured militarised vehicle which was used to hunt terrorists in Afghanistan and Iraq by citing the threat posed by domestic political activists. Which of course all ties into this increasing militarisation, increasing brutality of American policing. We had the big ACLU report recently. War comes home, the excessive militarisation of American policing. SWAT raids are through the roof over the past 20 years. Deaths, injuries, 
keep on rising as a result of brutal and often mistaken police raids. And remember how the establishment media and groups like White House Front Media Matters demonised and called us conspiracy theorists for years for warning about martial law. Well, I guess now you could um, include Newsweek in that category of wild conspiracy theorists because they're now saying, in light of events in Ferguson, that America's police have become an army and are, quote, indistinguishable from soldiers. So the tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists over at Newsweek, that crazy right-wing crackpot media outlet, and now saying the same thing that we were saying 10 years ago. And let me get to the key point here. By becoming increasingly militarised and brutal, the state itself is provoking civil unrest. By firing tear gas at journalists, by being so aggressive against peaceful protesters, they're the ones inciting riots. They want the riots. They want the civil unrest to spread. Because then they can justify the crackdown against political activists and dissidents that they've been planning for years. Just like we've seen in places like Bolivia, Ecuador and Argentina. They want the riots. They want the IMF riots that Greg Palast exposed back in 2001. So after the next economic collapse, they can asset strip the entire country. They want disorder. They want civil unrest. They've been preparing for it for years. We've covered the DHS bullet buys, the riot gear. And now they're openly inciting such riots with this militarised crackdown on the American people. So, snipers pointing guns at protesters and journalists in America. Nobody can deny the police state. Even Newsweek, for God's sake, is admitting that America's police forces are now standing armies. And just as we saw police and federal rangers pointing guns at Americans during the Bundy Ranch siege, we now see the same thing in Ferguson, Missouri, which of course is a predominantly black community. So it doesn't matter any race, colour, creed, political leaning or affiliation, all Americans equally are victims of this militarised police state which is why they need to join forces, forget the political differences, and band together to stand up in defence of their common constitutional rights and freedoms, which are being eviscerated, torn apart, during this outrageous crackdown in Ferguson, Missouri, 